guys welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner this week's what's for dinner is a collab with my friend sarah over at sarah's realm if you guys haven't already checked out her channel before make sure you click the link down below and go head over there she does all kinds of food related videos she's always got new ideas she's always putting out new food videos i absolutely love her channel and i think that you guys will too she's really really close to hitting a thousand subscribers as of me recording this so you guys make sure you go over there and subscribe so that she can finally hit a thousand subscribers that would be super awesome and if you're new here hello and welcome i am taylor i do these what's for dinner videos every week to give you guys some meal ideas and to motivate you guys and myself to cook more for our families as always any recipes that i mention will be linked down below now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner Friday night for dinner, we had enchilada bake. This is a recipe that Andy and I came up with uh, years ago. I can't even remember how long it's been, but I actually have a video for this on my YouTube channel already. It was before I even started doing what's for dinners that I put up that video. So it's really old. It's like three or four year years old. So I thought I would include it again in this video. So just start off by browning one pound of ground beef with some taco seasoning. I use about enough to equal one taco seasoning package. And then when the beef is browned, I drain the grease. Then I stir in one can of Rotel. You could also stir in a can of drained and rinsed beans, but usually we just stir in the can of Rotel. Next, I'm greasing my nine by 13 inch pan, and then I'm going to be spooning a like a couple spoonfuls of enchilada sauce into the bottom. Um, I actually made my own with a package of Aldi enchilada sauce. It, like mix it with some water and tomato sauce to make the enchilada sauce. Um, but usually I would use like a 28 ounce can of enchilada sauce. So I just put enough to coat the bottom of the pan and then I'm going to layer in some tortillas. This is actually the first time I made it with the corn tortillas and we really, really liked it. But you'll see me like kind of break them up the first layer because I didn't know like how I wanted to layer it in there and I determined later that I was just going to kind of like overlap them and that worked better. So after layering my first layer of tortillas in the bottom I'm going to spoon on that meat mixture and then sprinkle with some cheese and just repeat ending with some enchilada sauce and cheese on the very top and then I bake this in a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes. And then to get the top a nice and crispy, I broiled it for about two minutes. Here's what it looked like out of the oven. We just like to slice it up, serve it with maybe some avocado or sour cream on the top. It was super delicious and super filling. Saturday night we had shrimp and grits again. I told y'all when I shared it like two weeks ago that it was definitely going to be a repeat and a family favorite and I wasn't lying. Andy was like I want it again like now. So I made it again and it was super delicious and I will have the other video linked down below if you want to see how I made it. It is Valentine's Day and tonight for dinner the kids are having something different than me and Andy. Not something that I usually do, but I wanted to cook steak for me and him and he won't be home till like 9, which is obviously too late for the kids to have dinner because they go to bed at like 9. So I picked up this heart-shaped pizza at Aldi. It was in this box and I got it for around like $1.15 I think because it had a $3 off sticker on it and it was just a cheese pizza and the kids wanted pepperoni so I took my little heart shaped cutter and I cut some pepperonis into hearts and I also put the circles on there with the hearts cut out so they've got a pepperoni and cheese pizza 
and then I cut up some cucumber for them and some little mini sweet peppers. And they're going to eat it on these plates that I got for Valentine's Day. Like and that's going to be the kids' Valentine's Day dinner. And I will show you when I make me and Andy's. Okay, so I told you all that me and Andy's dinner is going to be steak. And then I'm going to do some baked potatoes in the air fryer. So I like to coat them with a little bit of olive oil and sprinkle some salt on them. And then cook them on 400. And usually for a big potato like this, it takes about 40 minutes. Um, but my, I'm working with the new air fryer still. Haven't done potatoes in it yet, so we will see how long it takes. I do like to flip them over about halfway through. So at 20 minutes, I will check them and turn them over and see how much time they need after that. Okay, it's been 50 minutes and these potatoes are probably bigger than any other potatoes I've ever made in the air fryer. So I think that's why they took longer, not because of the new air fryer, because most everything has been taking less time to cook. But as I said, these are really big. They're done now. I'm going to leave them in there so they can stay warm. And then I'm going to work on our steaks. I pulled these out a little while ago so they could be room temperature because that is best. And I dried them off and seasoned them with some salt and pepper. And I'm going to cook them in my heated cast iron pan with some olive oil and butter and do like 45 minutes per side. Here's my plate, you just saw Andy's plate, and um, we have plenty of leftover steak. Probably the kids wanted that for lunch tomorrow, and uh, yeah, so we'll do that. That's why I made the four potatoes, and me and Andy are probably gonna go watch something. Monday night for dinner, we had spaghetti. I had to make a big batch of the red sauce again, and I actually shared that before in a previous What's For Dinner, so I will link that down below for you guys. Spaghetti is always a family favorite. Um, I swear my family would probably eat it every day if I made it every day. Okay, tonight for dinner, I am doing air fryer chicken thighs. These are bone in, skin on. I love doing them in the air fryer because the skin will get super crispy. So I'm gonna season them on both sides with some Badia Complete and some Tony's Creole seasoning. And then I'm going to cook them skin side down for about 10 minutes. And then I'll flip them over and cook them for another like 15 to 20 minutes until they're cooked through and the skin is as crispy as we want it to be.
Okay, to go with our chicken thighs, I made a box of this chicken flavored rice from Aldi. It's like rice aroni basically. And then a can of green beans. So that's Andy's plate, that's my plate. These are the kids, I just went ahead and took theirs off the bone and cut it up to make it easier for them to eat. And I can't remember if I said what temp to cook the chicken on. I did it on 380. And it was probably about a total of 30 minutes to get it really crispy because as you can see, we like it really crispy. But that is going to be dinner for Tuesday. The next night I made a recipe for vegetable beef soup. This is something I've never made before. I've never made a vegetable beef soup and it turned out so good. So I started off by browning about two pounds of stew meat in some olive oil and I seasoned that with some salt and pepper. And I would recommend cutting up your stew meat into smaller pieces beforehand. Um, I thought it would maybe like fall apart a little bit more and it did turn out super tender after like simmering in the soup, but I did go in with my kitchen shears later. So I would recommend just like starting off with your stew meat cut into like little bite sized pieces. And I just browned that until it was browned on all sides. When the beef was brown, I removed that to the side and just saved it for later. And then I added in some onion, carrot, and celery, and I cooked that for about five minutes until they were softened. And then I went in with some garlic. I don't measure the garlic. I did, I know, more than the recipe. And I just sauteed that around for about 30 seconds. And then I dumped back in my beef, a big can of diced tomatoes, some Italian seasoning, a bay leaf, and then instead of doing a beef broth, I did seven cups of water and about enough of the beef bouillon that I buy at Sam's Club. I did about enough of that to equal seven cups. I didn't measure it. I just kind of eyeballed it. Um, I know like about what a teaspoon looks like and a teaspoon equals a cup so I just did some heaping spoonfuls of that and then I just brought that to a low simmer and then once it came to a simmer I covered it and reduced the heat a little bit to a low or medium low and I let that simmer for an hour until the beef was super tender. After the hour, I took my kitchen shears and just kind of cut up the meat into bite-sized pieces because I thought it would make it easier to eat, as I said at the beginning. And then I stirred in two cups of potatoes that I peeled and cut into about one inch pieces. This was like one really large potato equal two cups. And then I stirred in a can of drained green beans and a can of drained corn. The recipe originally called for frozen corn, green beans, and peas, but I thought some canned would be better. Just wouldn't have to like cook as long to be like soft like we like. So that is what I did. I used the canned instead and I think it turned out great. And I didn't do the peas just because I thought they would get too mushy in it and I'm not a fan of super mushy peas. So I just simmered that for another 20 minutes until the potatoes were tender. Once everything was tender, I removed that bay leaf and then made sure that the seasonings were good. I tasted it and added a little bit more pepper. I didn't need any more salt, but I did add a little bit more pepper. And I just served this soup with some nice homemade bread on the side. This is actually the crusty Italian bread that I love to make. And I shared it in a bread video that went up on Friday. So make sure you go check that out if you missed it. As I said, this was a favorite. I will definitely be making it again. It had no complaints from the entire family. And I know I say my kids eat everything that I make and y'all are like impressed. But usually they don't eat it without some complaints. Uh, usually they're like, oh, I don't like that. Uh, I don't like that. And they eat it because they know I'm not going to make anything else. But this literally had no complaints. Lily asked for seconds. They ate it without complaints again the next day for lunch. So I call that a win. It is Thursday night and tonight's dinner is going to be super easy. We are doing barbecue pulled pork baked potatoes. So later tonight I will make some baked potatoes in the air fryer. I'm going to do regular potatoes for the kids and Andy and sweet potato for myself 
and I've got this boneless pork shoulder roast with barbecue seasoning so it's already seasoned and everything and I got this from Aldi for a dollar off so what was it it was three dollars and fifty four cents for just over two pounds so I thought that was a pretty good price and the directions on it just say to throw it in the crock pot since it's already got seasoning and stuff on it and it's already noon here so I'm gonna throw this in there on high it's completely thawed out and I'm going to check on it at some point and see if I need to add any liquid. Um, and if I do, it'll probably just be like some barbecue sauce or something. But just going to open that up, toss it in there, cook it on high. Okay, here are our potatoes with the pulled pork on top we have done this before and it's really really good it's just a different way to eat pulled pork and I've actually never done it on a sweet potato though um, the sweet potato I did a taco sweet potato and it was really good so then I decided to try the sweet potato with the pulled pork because I think that'd be really good but there was a restaurant that used to be here in Georgia that did um, baked potatoes that were loaded with pulled pork so that's where I got the idea and it's really really good so if you haven't tried it you should definitely try it and you could do more toppings but the kids are simple just the pork potato with some butter and salt and pepper and cheese um, you could do sour cream you could even do like some bacon bits on there whatever you wanted but that is going to be our dinner for Thursday and that wraps up another week of what's for dinner. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on trying any of these recipes. I highly recommend trying that vegetable beef soup. It was so good. That was definitely our favorite meal of the week. Don't forget, as I said at the beginning, this was a collab with my friend Sarah over at Sarah's Realm. So make sure you click her link down below. Go over there, watch her what's for dinner, tell her that I sent you. And make sure you subscribe. She's really, really close to hitting a thousand subscribers. So help her hit that goal. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.